This is a continuation of my series on doing uh, Mercedes diesel engine swaps. You know, on those first couple videos, I left it open for comments and, and recommendations, and there was one thing that was pointed out repeatedly that I wholeheartedly agree with, and that is anything is possible. When you're talking engine swaps, that is true. But that's not the intent of my ongoing video series. As we continue this, I want to focus on those kind of swaps that the backyard mechanic can do without cutting, welding, fabricating, modification, maybe just some minor things. So we're going to start out with one of the simplest ones, and that is taking the, the OM617 five-cylinder turbo diesel engine out of a W126 sedan and putting it in a W123, okay? And it's, it's probably the easiest swap out there, but there are some things you have to be aware of. It's not, it's not a straight swap, okay? I'm gonna warn you this right away. So the engine's ready to come out. We're gonna pull the engine out. I'm gonna get it on a stand or on a cart, and then I'm gonna kind of walk around it with you and show you some of the things that we're gonna have to change on this engine here before we can put it in a 1984 300D. Now you can see I've, I've uh, cut the core support off. And you think, okay, why'd you do that? Well, this, is, this car is, is only for parts, so we're not trying to save everything here. And if you, the engine and transmission are co coming out together, that's the way you want to remove these. And we don't have to do such a high tilt, so we'll just be lifting up with the engine hoist and moving it on out. So uh, I'm gonna get the engine out. Uh, I've got another video on YouTube that shows how shows us removing an engine like this so I'm not going to repeat that in this video but we'll get this engine out and then I'm going to talk more specifically about some of the things you'll need to be aware of if you want to take and get a five cylinder turbo diesel engine out of a W126 300 SD and put it in a 300D if you haven't seen one of these out of the car before well here's your chance this is the infamous OM617 turbo diesel engine. I feel this is one of the best engines that's ever been built of all time. And I'm sure a number of you who've been around these engines will agree. So what I want to do now is talk a little bit about the differences between, uh, I guess you'd call the accessories on this engine as compared to a W123. You notice that the transmission is, is missing. Well, I did take it out together with the transmission. We've set the transmission down here on a pallet. I'll talk a little bit more about that and I'll give you a few tips about removing uh, the transmission from the engine. It's really important that they come out together. Um, there's a number of reasons. I'm not gonna get into it in this segment of, the, of this video series. But I'm going to move in close now and we're going, to talk, we're going to take a look at the right side of the engine and I'm going to point out the differences. These are the things that you're going to need to change. You're either going to need, if you're going to put this 126 300 SD engine in a 123 turbo, I'm only talking about putting it in a turbo 123. If you're to put this in a non-turbo 123, you have a whole bunch of other issues we won't get over go over that in this video, maybe go over that in another video because you've got some differences, major differences with transmission, linkages, and so on. So let me show you the differences right here on this side of the engine, some of the things you'll have to change out if you're gonna do this engine swap. There is very little difference on the right side. There's only a couple things that you're gonna have to be concerned about changing. The first is the motor mount. That's probably the most important. The W126 motor mounts are different. So this arm that you see right here and the position of the shock mount, uh, the actual shock is the same. The tower may be different depending upon the model. So you're going to have to change the motor mounts. You're gonna need W123 uh, turbo motor mounts when you put the W126 300SD engine in it. You'll also see some differences in the wiring harness, but that's a real easy swap out. You'll just end up using your older wire harness for the alternator and the starter wiring. Okay, so that's, that's real simple there. Motor mounts primarily. Now let's move over to the other side of the engine. I'll point out a few other things that'll need changing. The same here on this side, you'll have to replace the motor mount arm. And uh, you're also going to have to change out the air conditioning hoses. They, they're totally different uh, between the two chassis. And you'll also, this is, this is something some people don't realize, but you're also gonna have to change these oil cooler hoses. They're a different length 
and a little bit different design here on uh, between the 126 and the 123. So the oil cooler hoses, the AC hoses, the linkages, the linkage arm's different, but this assembly right here is the same. So basically, you're just going to have to use the arm from the 123. So that's that's real easy. But there's a couple other things that may surprise you, and one of them is this oil filter housing. It's different because the W126 uses an electric oil pressure sending unit where the W123 has a hose that goes up to the gauge. You don't have to change the whole unit. If you, you can just re, re, replace this rear plate and it has the, uh, the adapter, the different design, but a lot of times if you need to, you just pull the one off your other engine and swap it out. So we're going to talk about some of the difficulties of getting this off and what's required to change the hoses in the next video in the series. But once again, you're going to have to pay attention to this right here on your oil filter housing when you do the swap. And other than that, you're, you're pretty much, everything else is the same. There's one subtle difference in the belts for the alternator, but when you make the swap, you're just going to have to remember that you're going to order 300 SD alternator belts, not 300 D, unless you change the pulleys. So that's, that's about it. You can see there's not a lot different, but there are just a few things you're going to have to swap out. Now let's talk about the transmission because there's a, quite a difference between the two transmissions. The transmissions between the uh, W126 and the W123 turbo models, basically the same, it, you know, but it, there's one very important difference in this right here. It has to do with the speedometer pickup and sending unit which is located right here on this rear uh, housing. Now the 300 SD uses an electronic speedometer so it has a totally different arrangement right here where this is an electronic pickup and of course the W123 has a speedometer cable which screws in here. So you can't just take a W126 transmission and put it in a 123 or you won't have a speedometer but I want you to know that I have successfully in the past removed the entire rear plate and all the gears off one and put the other one on to make the swap so that can be done. Now there's a couple things I discovered in this transmission which are big problems and we're going to go over that when we talk about inspecting not only the engine but the transmission before you plan to put it back in the car. When doing engine swaps between different models, sometimes it's a very good idea to have the entire car and have both cars there because you may end up needing certain parts off one to put on the other. But when you're talking about a 300 SD turbo diesel engine from a W126 chassis going into a W123 turbo chassis, that's probably not true. You could actually just go get a engine out of a wrecking yard because all the parts you're going to need are already on the 123. So if you get the 126 engine like you see here on this, this hoist, basically all the parts you're going to take off your, your bad engine and put on here. So that's why I consider this one of the, one of the easiest swaps when you're talking about these older Mercedes diesels. Some of you may have noticed uh, this engine is very clean. <laughs> You know, it's, it's exceptionally clean for an old turbo diesel. Well, we cleaned it before we took it out of the car. And we do this because it's just a lot easier to work on. You know, I, I highly recommend you do that because it's just so much nicer when you're working with the bolts and, and, and working around and getting parts on and off the engine that's not all messy and oily. We do, we use our engine cleaning technique. I do have a video, an on-demand video on my website. It's a lengthy video on how uh, we go about cleaning these engines and, and engine compartments. So I'll just put a link in the show more if you're interested in learning more about how we go about our engine cleaning procedures here before removal. So in the next video, uh, I want to talk about, it's probably going to take more than one video, but when you pull these engines out and you get ready for a swap, my number one admonition, in fact, it's probably a warning, is don't just put the engine in. in. <laughs> just don't say, oh man, this is a good run, I'm just going to put it in. There's a lot of things you need to inspect and there's some parts you should change because they're so much easier to change when the engine is out of the car. 
So we're going to go over that in the next, I don't know how many videos this is going to be, but it's going to be three, four, five, maybe more videos. We'll take one specific area at a time. I'll give you my recommendations on what parts should be replaced, what should be inspected, what should be tested, and what's required in terms of uh, mechanical skills to get that done. So, so stay tuned for the next part in this series.